the NFL and the NFL Players Association will be getting together for the next time to continue their discussions toward a new collective bargaining agreement. This is a strange development from Wednesday because the two sides were due to get together for three days of CBA discussions. The first day, Wednesday, abruptly, mid to late afternoon, the two sides issued a joint statement indicating that the talks are already over, that they're very productive, beneficial to both sides, but they don't have anything further to talk about, and they're going to cancel Thursday and Friday and get back together again, reportedly on July 29. And I, I understand that the news is the news, and the joint statement is the joint statement, and we can either take it at face value or we can probe a little bit more deeply, and I choose to probe a little bit more deeply and wonder what in the world really is going on here. You've got the NFL wanting to get a deal done by the start of the regular season. More on that coming up in a moment. And you've got some real issues that you need to work through if they're ever going to get a deal done. Yeah, there are some incidental issues, little things that they need to talk through. But the big issues, and the two big issues in my view, are how the revenue ultimately is going to be split and how much money gets taken off the top for stadium credits before they do the split. Because obviously, the more money that the NFL siphons off the top to pay for stadium construction and renovation, the less money is available to split between the two sides. Those are the two issues. And you know, I look at it this way. If we couch this as an extension, well, it's not really an extension in the sense that both sides say, hey, everything is working well, let's just keep doing what we're doing. They're coming to the bargaining table, and they are focusing on big questions like whether and to what extent the current revenue split should be changed, whether and to what extent the current allowances for stadium credits should be adjusted. These are significant issues. And at some point, there's going to be some acrimony. There's going to be some hard feelings. There's going to be some tough arguments and moments in the negotiating room. And, and I'm starting to think that the two sides are creating a false impression that everything is well just because they realize it's not in anyone's interests to create the impression that things aren't going well, that if they can maintain this idea that it's all very smooth, it's all very simple, it's all very normal, while they fight it out privately, then the football fan doesn't freak out about the possibility of another lockout. Now, I don't know that that's sustainable, and I, I kind of wonder, and this is just my idea, this is just my thought based upon the circumstances, that they got together on Wednesday and they began for the first time to talk about real issues and realized, well, we got some real issues here. Before we spend the next three days beating the hell out of each other, let's just press pause on this and let's get back together on July 29, coincidentally or not, when the members of the executive committee who have jobs with NFL teams are in training camp. And that reduces the overall potential for friction. The fewer people you have negotiating, the less the chance that one person is going to get upset by something that someone the other side may have to say. So I, I think that, that before they got to the point where the crap hit the fan on Wednesday, they recognized Let's call this productive. Let's call this beneficial. Let's call it a day. Let's not get together Thursday or Friday. Let's get together on the 29th day of July. And maybe that's the moment when they'll bloody each other up a little bit, but act to the rest of us like everything is still going very well. Now, Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.